I'm a medical doctor specializing in the new field of performing arts medicine. It's amazing how many musicians and student musicians don't know about this field. Everybody knows about sports medicine and if you're an athlete you know that there are special clinics and doctors that you can go to see who know all about playing basketball and football and those kinds of injuries. But now there's a field called performing arts medicine that specializes in treating medical problems of musicians and dancers. I'm uh, Matthew Joby. <laughs> I'm 20 years old. I'm a trombonist. And um, I find that when I practice for extended periods of time, maybe three or four hours at a time, I'll um, begin to have no warmth in my neck or my shoulder at all. It's like ice cold, like there's no circulation there. And the, the muscles tend to get tight. The trombone is really not a, a well-balanced instrument. And the weight of the bell falls outside the left hand. And, it fall, and the weight is also forward. So there's two torques that occur on, on the left arm. One wants to pull the wrist out this way, and the other wants to pull it forward. So consequently, you have to kind of stabilize with the left wrist in order to keep the instrument to be pulled forward. And the, the stabilization of the left wrist kind of translates to the whole left arm. After all, the right arm is the one that's loose because it's moving the slide. The left is sort of an awkward position. Not only do you have that force of torque for stabilizing the weight of the instrument, but the right index finger goes up over the bell to make the pressure against the lip, and then the thumb is often stretched way back to operate the valves. So there's a lot of tension in the left hand, and that transmits up to this area. Um, so from the muscles constantly being sort of tense in that area, it the, the tightness of the muscles actually can cut down on the blood flow because the blood vessels run directly beneath the muscles. So if the muscles are tight, you can get sort of a, a cutting down or a compromise of the blood flow, which could result in the coldness. My name is Arlen Ian. I play violin. Um, I have a question. Uh, like, do you advocate like shoulder rests and stuff? Like, you know, the, the coon pads and the plein airs and all that stuff because like my teacher, she wants me to like get rid of mine because she says you don't like obtain like the closeness like to your instrument that you kind of like need. And for me, it'll like slip off and fall on the floor if I don't if I don't have this thing. But she really doesn't like it. I just want to know what you think if like if it's like unhealthy or something. I, I like these questions. These are all good questions. Let me take this opportunity to introduce the science of what's called ergonomics. M many of you may have come across that term and not be sure what it means or how it applies to music making. But ergonomics is basically the relationship of the worker to the workstation. And in this case, means your instrument, the stand, the setup, all that kind of stuff. The interface, which means sort of the contact point between your body and the musical instrument. Um, on the violin and the viola, it's not a very good interface. It's not a very good fit. In other words, if you look at the shape of your jaw and the shape of your shoulder, and if you just look at the violin without a chin rest and a shoulder rest, it doesn't fit that area very well. First of all, it's not big enough to fill in the space so that you have to do that kind of hiking. Uh, second of all, the surfaces the, chin, the, the top and the bottom of the violin don't really match kind of the contours of this area, okay? So in order to play with the least amount of muscle tension, which I think should be the ultimate goal, when you watch great players, you watch Itzhak Perlman, he looks so relaxed when he plays. If you're having to tense up here in order to keep the instrument from slipping away, which is what you have to do if you don't have a good interface, then you have a lot of muscle tension here. Neurologically speaking, if you're tense up here, it's harder to be relaxed here because there's kind of a spillover of muscle tension that goes down your arm. Oftentimes, uh, I uh, have trouble with my right hand because it's the hand that supports the instrument. And uh, even in the bottom of the hand, there's a lot of technique necessary. And I was wondering why pain can develop in the uh, forearm and the fingers. 
this is a very common problem in clarinetists and oboists uh, particularly. And historically speaking, the clarinet dates back to oh, the early 1700s or late 1600s when it was an instrument made out of boxwood, which was very light, and it just had a couple of keys on it. Over the ensuing you know, decades or centuries even, uh, the clarinet is now made out of grenadilla wood, which is very dense and very heavy, and it's got lots and lots of hardware. All this has, has expanded its musical capabilities, but has increased the weight to about two pounds. And the thumb is not a very good place to hang two pounds of weight for hours and hours a day, you know, day after day, year after year. To treat the problem, sometimes what we do is make a splint for the person that supports the thumb, that helps to take some of the weight off the thumb rest. Um, there's a uh, woodwind shop in San Francisco that makes an adjustable height thumb rest because sometimes the position of the th where the thumb is in the hand makes a big difference. If the thumb is too low, it puts a lot more strain. The thumb should be about opposite the index finger. So many times you have to just accept where the thumb rest is, but if you get an adjustable thumb rest, that helps. They also make clarinet thumb rests that have a, a, have a lateral extension that covers more of your thumb and distributes the weight over a larger area resting the bell on your leg, and sort of the ultimate solution, but not acceptable to a lot of people, is they make clarinet posts where you take off the thumb rest, there's a little button that substitutes for the thumb rest, and there's a little device that you use, it's like a little tube that rests on your chest, and the, the button drops in there, so it takes all the weight off the right hand. I was wondering, after you play like long rehearsals here and you practice for a lot of hours, you usually, like I find, you can't walk with your legs really hurt. Is there anything you can, I don't know, they just you can't walk. It's like they're like paralyzed. Is there anything you can do about it or sit up straighter or what do you recommend? With the cello, you're much more constrained by the instrument in terms of where you sit and in terms of your posture. The violin, the viola, you have a lot more leeway in your posture, shifting and changing your posture. I've even frequently seen uh, the first violins and string quartets sort of rise up out of their seats during dramatic passages and the like. If you were to look at these seats, you'll see that these uh, seats actually slope slightly backwards, okay? The problem with that is, is that it closes up your hip angle. It makes for, a, for an acute angle of, of the hips, which tends to compromise the nerves and the blood vessels and to a certain extent the muscles. The solution is to get a wedge cushion that goes in the chair and converts it from a backward sloping seat to a forward sloping seat which opens up the angle. Think about riding on a horse, okay? When you sit on a horse, your thighs actually slope somewhat downward. What that does is it brings the weight of your body directly over your sit bones so that you're balanced. And it opens up this angle so that the, it's not compressed. When you sit back in a chair like this, it actually closes up your hip angles and it makes for a lot of stress. I have a concert coming up in three weeks maybe on music that I don't really know that well. And so, you know, I'm practicing very hard every day to be ready for this. And um, I'm starting to feel a little pain in my forearm maybe. You know, it could be the first, the early stages of tendonitis. Um, how far is too far to push that? I mean, what, what are you supposed to do if that starts to happen, you know? You can't, are you, should you cancel the concert or what? I mean, First of all, in terms of pain, I think one shouldn't push pain at all. Pain is your body's way of warning you that there's a problem. It's a wake-up call. It's like saying, hello, you know, that there's, there's something wrong there. And if you push that, it's likely to get worse and worse and worse. Make sure that you only practice those passages in a limited sense. In other words, to be aware, number one, that it's an awkward or stressful passage. Number two, to say, okay, I'm going to just practice this for a minute or two then I'm going to go back to the easy parts and then later come back to the difficult part because the musician's natural tendency is to take the hardest passages and practice them over and over and over again as in, I'm going to get this mother before I go to bed tonight. This is really the most important part of what we do in this field. While we do treat injuries, we always try to work, especially with the younger musicians, to educate them regarding causes of injuries so that we can prevent them. We do this through workshops, both on things like exercises from musicians, posture and practice habits, and other aspects of uh, musicianship that can help to minimize physical problems. I think the most important thing is to educate students that pain is a warning signal and not something to be played through. It's amazing how many students have been given the advice by colleagues and teachers to push through pain and to play through pain, and unfortunately this results in further and further injuries.